there and welcome back to the Devo. I am Roman. This is the second episode of our F Sharp introductory series. In the last episode, I was introducing the domain to you, which is making a business out of an ice cream truck. And I was talking about identifiers, names, values, value bindings, and I was showing you the REPL. In this episode, we want to help Clara to predict how much money she could earn when she sells a specific number of scoops or ice creams. And this gives me a perfect reason to introduce to you one of the most important concepts in any functional programming language. And in F sharp make or F sharp makes no difference in this, which is functions. So without further ado, los geht's. So we want to define a function that helps Clara to predict uh, the, the money she makes out of her sales. So let's do this. For, for introducing a function, we need to introduce a new identifier or a new, a new name. And for this, we use, again, the let keyword. We use, so we say, let result of they, that should be the name of our functions. And this has, function has one parameter, it's the number of scoops sold. And this function returns a float. And we say the number of scoops sold times uh, 90 cent, this is what we defined in the last episode, is the result of our day. So we say the number of scoops that, that's, that Clara sold dur um, during a day times 90 cent, price for one scoop, is the result of our day. So what did we do here? We defined a function. This function has a name. This function has a parameter, which is a float and it returns also a float. Um, you, we see here that the last line in a function is always implicitly returned. So in F sharp, there is no function that has no return value. We come back to this in a later episode when we talk about expressions. And the last line of the function is always implicitly returned. So we don't need a return keyword or anything here. Um, we can call this function. So we can say the result of the day was 23 sold scoops. Well, I need to send the function first to the REPL. And the result of the day with 23 um, sold scoops is 20 euros and 70 cents um, and 37 euros 80 cents or 67 50 cents respectively so we can just call the function again with no braces um, we, we just use the name of the 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 identifier and give it one parameter because this function uses one parameter when we have a look at the actual type of the function we see that the function has one parameter which is a float and the name is number of scoops sold and it returns a float. This is given by F sharp because it's defined that a float multiplied with something, this something has to be a float, we can't put it in, in here, and the return value is always a float. Nice. So we defined our first function. But now that Clara sees that this was possible, she, as every good customer, has more ideas. So, for example, her idea is that, that she wants to try out different prices for her, for her uh, scoops. So, she can see how much money she would make if she uh, wouldn't use like 90 cents for one scoop, but 1 euro or 1 or euro 10 or 1 euro 20. So, in this case, we, we can build another function. And we call this, for example, day result. Doesn't really matter. It's pretty much the same. And we have number of sold scoops again and we have the price which is also returns a float and what we return in this function is sold times price we send this to the repo so we see down here that the function the type of the function is that it gets one parameter which is a float and another parameter which gets a float and it returns a float. Why does it look so strange? So why does it have like one parameter followed by an arrow, one parameter followed by an arrow, and another parameter? 
And what does it mean? Well, it means something specific um, and it's connected to currying and partial application, but we won't put our emphasis on this for now. We, we will come back to this later. But for now, you can just think that the, all the parameters except the last one are input parameters for a function and the last one is always the output parameter for a function. So we have our day results here and I just copy and paste this um our function calls to this function and there we can say okay let's let's imagine i am clara sold 42 uh, scoops a day and she would make 37.8 euros when she would take 90 cents and she would make 42 euros when she when she would take one euro and she would make 46 euros for 1.1 euro per scoop so one more thing in the last episode i told you that f sharp has a pretty strong type inference so that we don't need to use types for our parameters all the time this is true so for example in this case um we wouldn't really need to to put our return type in here i can just kill this and send this to the REPL, and we see here that the that the result of day is still has still the same type it takes a float and it returns a float and this is because we multiplied this with another float so if sharp knows that pretty much everything in here needs to be a float we can be explicit when we put this in here we can even put the type of the parameter in here it wouldn't really change anything for our functions all right cool so we defined our first functions with one or with multiple parameters even. And of course, there's something new on the horizon. So when Clara played around with the different prices, she realized that her strawberry flavor is much more expensive in production because she uses fresh fruits for this. Um, and that's why she wants to, she has the idea that she wants to take a different amount of money for different flavors. And this problem is going to be solved by us in the next episode when we talk about expressions, control flow, if and else, and pipes. So, see you then. Bye-bye.